Good morning. Welcome to the April Fireside Chat. I want to assure you that I am not Mike in disguise. He is away at a conference and will be returning back to the office on Monday. So I have the great pleasure of being able to introduce our lineup of speakers. And we mentioned there was going to be limited seating, but for those who are watching from apartments, we actually have quite a few empty seats. So if any of you want to hop on down, not all of you, but we have about probably 20 seats down here in the lounge for any of you who might be interested in coming down, please join us. So for today, I am going to be giving in just a moment, a brief update on COVID. And then I don't have the ability to see, so I'm gonna to have to flip through my pages here because I can't see the screen, but then following the COVID update, you will hear from your partners and Karen campaign co-chairs, Karen and Jeff. And I assured them that I missed the memo last month and failed to wear my pink as they kicked off partners and caring, but I am in pink today to honor that fabulous campaign. And then we will also hear from Carol Ottenberg on the GEM grant status. Elizabeth will join us for the resident council update. We'll hear from Brian Holtz on the overview of retirement community week festivities that will be coming up in May. Jeff Chanley will come up for some food services updates. And then we will have some introductions of new residents by Valerie and employees by Byron, our HR director. Want to just do a quick sound check before I proceed. Are we doing okay on sound? I want to let everyone, especially those of you who are watching from the TV room or the comforts of your apartment, this is the first time we're using some new equipment. So please be patient with us. We welcome input, especially those of you who are watching from apartments or down in the TV room. Let us know some feedback so that we can continue adjusting as we acclimate to the new equipment. So on COVID, what a great turnout for the Booster Clinic on Wednesday. I'm so thrilled for those of you here today who received a booster that you're here. That uh, is a good sign. I've heard from a number of you who did fairly well, have very little side effects. I know some of you did experience some side effects. I was going to get my booster on Wednesday, but with both Christy and Mike away this week at a conference, I thought, gosh, if we had an earthquake or some other disaster, somebody's got to be here. So I will hold and get my booster soon when we have that available for assisted living and more of you. So we were able to offer on Wednesday a total of 294 vaccines. Great number. I am so, so sorry. We were crushed to have to turn away a few of you towards the end as we got down to the final wire. We were running between the four vaccinators. How many doses? How many doses? Counting the people left. And unfortunately, we ran out and did have to turn some of you away. So please be assured that we will be making another opportunity available for independent residents still interested along with assisted living and staff sometime during the week of May 16. I'm hoping to get that confirmation from Bartel soon as to when that final date will be, but tentatively they have shared sometime likely during the week of May 16. We will let you know when that date is confirmed and open back up registration, same process as before, where you will contact reception and we will have consent forms available closer to that date. I want to also share that we will be sending out uh, today to assisted living family members consent forms along with the memo so we can begin to collect those back from durable power of attorney. In terms of general data overall on the boosters to date, I mentioned already 294 came through on Wednesday. That included 267 residents, 27 staff members. I've also heard from 56 additional residents who received their boosters elsewhere prior to Wednesday's event. We have had four assisted living residents receive their boosters already. So today, from what I know, that 76% of our independent residents have received their second boosters. We've got 6% of our assisted living uh, residents who have received their second booster. 
for any of you who have received your booster and you haven't let me know, please, please do so, so we can continue tracking. For those of you who have left voicemails, thank you. I have received them all. You're welcome to leave me a voicemail or email me that you've received your booster. We are not collecting, nor do we retain vaccine records. So we don't need those records. Just let me know that you've had it. If you remember the date, great, not necessary. But any of that information and type is wonderful. But again, not absolutely necessary. In terms of staff, we're continuing to work with staff to get their boosters and collect the information to confirm booster status. In terms of the general state of COVID, so King County Public Health is a website that I track very closely in terms of looking at the more local region with respect to uh, cases. And unfortunately, King County has tipped into a higher category. They are now in the medium category as defined by CDC, which means now there are over uh, 200 cases per 100,000. So that tipped us into the medium category. We have been just a few short weeks ago, 50.5, 50.4 per 100,000. So the cases have climbed, unfortunately, with this uh, BA2 variant that is circulating around the globe and certainly right here close to home. King County indicated that per this medium category, it doesn't necessarily mean or fundamentally change the outbreak condition, but it does tell us that the COVID-19 risk is increasing for individuals and for our general community. So King County is just recommending strongly again, because the case count is climbing, to continue with those vigilant practices that help lower our risk for contracting COVID, that is continuing to get your boosters if you haven't received them yet. It means being mindful of settings that you're in, both here at Horizon House and in outside settings to check on the air filtration. Wanna have well-ventilated indoor systems as much as possible. They're also saying that outdoor is better in terms of the ventilation. So certainly as the weather is getting better, it will be easier for us to resume some gatherings with friends and family in outdoor spaces. And King County is also strongly recommending that if you are one who is high risk, you have underlying health conditions that uh, severely compromise your immune system to consider testing when possible before gathering, especially in larger gatherings. So I am hopeful that many of you took advantage of those free test kits that were made available to citizens across the country from both state and federal opportunities. And I'll talk more about those home test kits in just a moment. Closer to home, right here at Horizon House, you're all aware of unfortunately the increased COVID communications that we have been in an outbreak status. The first COVID case that we experienced with this outbreak status was identified in an assisted living resident back on April 9th. So we're getting close to a month since we started this. I can tell you we're getting a little fatigued up in assisted living right now. It's been hard. And thus far, we have had a total since that first case, nine assisted living residents test positive for COVID, five independent living residents, I have one independent living resident right now in strict quarantine because of an infected family member where there's been a lot of repeated close contacts. So I'm a little concerned that we may be seeing another case in that individual we're closely testing at the moment. We have realized five assisted living staff members positive and most recently yesterday, two independent living staff members. So we have a total in this outbreak thus far of 21 infected members of our community. So it is coming down. I think we're feeling a little more optimistic that we've gotten through the brunt of this particular outbreak, but uh, I'm confident and unfortunately I'm confident that we will continue to realize more cases. This is the reality of where we are right now. And as more variants take off, and we can anticipate they will. There is some conversation around an XE variant that is uh, really coming up uh, overseas that's going to probably make landfall in the States at some point. So, you know, this is part of what we are living with. 
And so on that note, there was a question that came up recently about should we be closing the Monday market when we had more cases a couple of weeks ago? Right now, the virus task force is working very hard to keep things open so that we can learn to live with this climate of communicable disease. So this is where your judgment and your self self risk is important to evaluate. How comfortable are you going to the Monday market where it is a little bit tighter space? How comfortable are you going to the different programs where there will be more people in an enclosed area? Rather than shutting down completely for everyone, unless we're mandated, of course, by King County Public Health, we want to try to keep things going. And you'll need to make an individual decision about what's most comfortable for you and your health risk. For now, we are staying the course with mask use at all times until we see those transmission rates come down. That's just the safest thing right now. We'll hope to return back to that place we were recently and being able to lose the mask for uh, residents. But until we see those numbers come down, we'll stay the course. Those test kits I mentioned, I really strongly encourage you, if you have not been able to get test kits or didn't take advantage of those programs, next time you're out getting groceries at the drugstore, please pick up a home test kit. They're widely available in, in all drugstores. Get one or two. I can tell you that between the several infected and dependent living residents, I had a contact about 16 or 17 additional independent living residents who were identified as close contacts. We follow the CDC guidance, which is very clear that if you have had an exposure and have been a close contact, if you were up to date with vaccines, that means you were vaccinated and have received your first booster, you do not have to quarantine. However, CDC very strongly states that you should be testing on day five after exposure. If you test sooner than five days, there's a good chance you may have a false result because it can take five days for that viral load to build up in your body to be detected. So please wait until five days. I encourage you to get a home test kit to keep on hand. You never know, unfortunately, when you may get that call, maybe from me as a contract tracer here at Horizon House, or you may get a call from someone outside of Horizon House, family, friend whom you've recently gathered with, calling you to say, I've been infected with COVID and I was with you three days ago, a week ago. So that is really, really important to follow. And as a contact tracer, what I am commonly hearing from those of you who I've had to call in that role is, well, who was it? As a contact tracer and with the training I've gone through as a contact tracer, we are not permitted to share or disclose the name of the infected individual. That doesn't mean you may not connect some dots. That doesn't mean the infected person may not voluntarily choose to reach out to close contacts. It's not a requirement. But please understand, I'm not at liberty to share who those names are, but I will do my best while protecting confidentiality of the infected person to give you at least a day of potential exposure, not much more than that, to again protect the identity unless the infected person chooses to reveal that themselves. Okay. Any any questions at this juncture on COVID before we move on to more exciting things? All right, without further ado, I'm going to ask Karen and Jeff to come on up to share with you an update on Partners in Caring. Yes, you may have speakers. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's really a pleasure to be here and to all of you who are watching on television. The Partners in Caring program is one of my favorite things about Horizon House. It's the example and the evidence of the spirit of community here. The money that we raise every year is for our community, for our fellow residents, for our employees. It supports residents who may not have, uh, who have run out of money through no fault of their own, it supports employees who are trying to uh, improve their education and their lives. 
And it's also for the GEM grants and others like those, things like that, that really give so much to enhance our community. And so I urge you uh, in the spirit of community here to consider making a gift, a meaningful gift to you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Well, good morning. I have, well, I think very good news. We do know at this time about, I think 47% of residents have contributed and we're hoping to reach uh, up to at least 60% in the next month. I just wanted to kind of remind folks how you can give to this important uh, program we have here. It can be a check, it can be a cash, and it could even be a credit card. Uh, you can do stock transfers, and uh, many of us uh, probably are getting uh, a required minimal distribution from our IRAs that also can be given through there. And that, fortunately, uh, that gift is, you know, is deducted from our taxes or from our income so that we don't pay taxes on that, that gift. Uh, there are other, several other ways, but um, I think if you uh, are wondering exactly other methods that you might uh, contribute, you can talk to Charlene or uh, Ruth Ann in the, in the philanthropic office. So keep up the good work. We're, we're doing well. Thanks, folks. Am I allowed to touch this to bring it down or not? Thank you. Good morning, everybody here in the room and on TV, all the ships at sea. Uh, I'm so happy to be here today to give you a report on the recent award of GEM grants. I'm now going to look in the screen and see if it has anything on there. Yes, it does. So that's a big help. Uh, we have a huge number. We have nine this time, uh, which I think reflects our coming out of COVID somewhat. And uh, I think that the diversity and the creativity of the grants and a heads up to everybody who researched and wrote a grant, I think it really mirrors the uh, vitality and diversity of the community here. So with that, I'm going to take it from the top. Uh, First grant, music devices. And this was an upgrade of equipment to keep current a wonderful program in memory care and assisted living. It's called Music and Memory. New music players and headphones will help at least 12 residents, most with dementia, some of them nonverbal, enjoy their favorite music on a personalized playlist. Next, the long arm quilting machine. I can hear the cheers from the sewing room right now. The sewing committee is so excited to have a new machine because quilting is a thriving and growing activity here as many residents make quilts for charity and personal use. This long arm quilting machine will enable quilters to make small quilts more easily, think arthritic hands, and allow the making of larger bedside quilts. Now, if you haven't been down to the B2 level recently where the sewing machine is, sewing room is, do go down. They often have a large quilt that's just been completed on the wall in the hallway and you can peek or probably even go into the sewing room and see what they have going on there. It's wonderful. The Vesper Choir needed new binders and supplies. This noble, dowdy group of about 15 choir members under the leadership of Georgia Nelson, they have been practicing and using old, worn out binders probably for years now. Uh, they rehearse often, they perform monthly at the Vesper service, and they will now enjoy a uniform product of new matching binders 
and improve use of ease, such as they'll have things like pencil holders, so they don't have to put their pencils behind their ears. Next is the bridge dealing machine. I'm not sure I understand this, but I'm happy to tell you about it because as a bridge player, I know that dozens of residents play bridge here. And with this snazzy new bridge hand dealing machine, it will enable, I think it's people who play duplicate bridge players to prepare hands in advance of games. And deals can also be prepared for players up in assisted living. In addition to the random hands that the machine can work its wonders on, uh, it can be programmed to deal with specific types of hands uh, and which will be invaluable for our several bridge teachers here. Next is puzzle drawers, a subject dear to my heart, as you all know. Our internationally known wooden puzzle collection and our ever-growing cardboard puzzle collection. And here I want to give a big thank you to donors who regularly leave us sometimes brand new wooden cardboard puzzles, which is just great. We love them. At any rate, our collections will benefit it from an added storage cabinet space. Fixed shelves on the cabinets down on the B1 level are very low and very deep. Think back spasms and knee pain. They will be replaced with glide shelves, which will come in and out, allowing us easy access and storage of puzzles. And the shelves will be built by our own Horizon House carpentry wizard, Ramon. That's great news for us. Next, Ryan a pneumatic functional trainer for the gym. Look for this hydraulic powered functional trainer exercise machine, a multifaceted device that allows you uh, users to improve strength and mobility in new ways. It was very exciting. The committee had a rare field trip. We went to the gym where Ryan gave us a full tour and we were able to get his thinking on how he thinks, what works, what doesn't work, what machines are being used, what machines aren't being used. Will there be room for this new, wonderful pneumatic functional trainer? Ryan says yes. And uh, I think that we'll all be down there to look it out and hopefully to work on it. Then there's a mannequin torso. This will be used up in memory care and assisted living where residents will be able to have small group activities of dressing and redressing the mannequin. Um, they'll be using a treasure trunk of items from the Monday market. I love the crossover uses here. Uh, and I have a feeling that we may see that mannequin down here maybe dressed for the summer picnic or dressed for New Year's Eve. I think maybe we should get three mannequins. <laughs> okay, then we have, I'll try not to laugh, laughter yoga. Yes, you're hearing it right, laughter yoga. This will be a weekly class with an outside instructor zooming to a large screen with Horizon House co-facilitators leading groups in independent living, and assisted living. And there will be also an option to do it live in your own apartment. So prepare please for laughter yoga. And finally, conversation starter cards. I really never thought we would need conversation starters at Horizon House when I hear the talk in the fireplace lounge, but these conversation cards are for workshops and programs when you want to get ideas flowing and energy be on the increase and to uh, maybe break any blockages. So they will be used by residents and staffs to help spark ideas at meeting and events. Now, I think I've covered everything on the list. I do want to thank and recognize my co-committee members, Marjorie Perdue, Les Cox, 
Margaret King, Joan Singler, and our wonderful staff leader who keeps us in line, Ruth Ann Ford. I see there's a deadline up there, September 8th. So start now to think about ideas you might have for GEM grant proposals to improve your little corner of Horizon House. Talk to Ruth Ann about it. She'd be happy to hear from you. And meanwhile, now it's my pleasure to introduce Elizabeth Hoover. So, did you know, everybody, that there are just this week alone, 18 events or activities listed in the alert, which are offered for your participation and enjoyment by various resident initiated committees under the umbrella of the Residence Council. This is the purpose for which the council was formed. And this is typical of the offerings which the council and its program leaders make possible for all of us for education and pleasure to enhance the quality of our lives here at Horizon House. The Monday Market, which we all enjoy frequently, was created by early residents for the sole purpose of funding these programs and activities the council recognizes. And there should be a photo now about something that occurred this last week, thanks to the Environment Committee for their effort all last week to stimulate our thinking of ways we can care for our earth. Thanks also to all of you who responded with written pledges and pinned them on the colorful clothesline in the Farside Lounge. So to learn more about the workings of other committees, the Resident Council invites you to attend our monthly meetings, open to all, which occur on the third Tuesday every month. Watch for an announcement about next month. It may even be here, otherwise on Zoom. And replays of our meetings are gonna be shown on H8 TV regularly on the last Thursday of the month. Watch the alert again for timing of those replays. Hopefully, you all will become involved in resident council activities and programs and participate in our efforts to enhance our daily lives here at Horizon House. We hope you'll take advantage of these opportunities offered to learn and appreciate and respect the spirit of our diverse community. Thank you. And Brian Holtz has the podium now. Thank you, Elizabeth. An example of our community when we hear about partners and caring and how wonderful that is and all the gem grants that we have and the activities that we have in all the meeting spaces. And here we are for the first time using this new space and this equipment and how IT has helped us to stream it into your apartments. And so as we think about right over here next to us, Anderson Hall is in the process of getting refreshed for us. Just um, a little bit of an update that we do anticipate the Sky Lounge to be opened for us by the 1st of June. And so as we, yes, we're excited to be able to have that back. I am cautious on saying an exact date because as the date draws closer, Reese and I will be looking at certain events that are of larger size to place into that space. And then we'll be able to open that up for your enjoyment and, and to have that. So yet another aspect of Horizon House that's pretty special that I'm talking about is Retirement Community Week. It is a time where we celebrate each other and how special Horizon House is. And it is an opportunity for staff to appreciate staff. Residents have an opportunity to thank staff and we thank residents. And so right here in the Fireside Lounge, we'll be setting up our Bright Spot card sales. 
And if you're not sure what those are, those are a card that you can fill out, put somebody's name on it and write a little note to thank them for why they are special and what contributions you appreciate of them. And then staff will distribute those. And so we'll have that happening. Um, Retirement Community Week that starts May 23rd, Monday through Thursday of that week, every day we'll have the sales set up here in this space. And uh, we have morning and afternoon times. And for 50 cents, uh, we put a couple pieces of chocolate that everybody loves their chocolate on the cards. And then we'll distribute those on Friday to the staff. And then daily, we'll be putting those in resident cubbies as they come in for residents. And so um, we're really excited for that to happen. And all the um, money that comes in for that goes to the Employee Emergency Fund. And we will have that set up so that um, you don't have to have cash. We'll have it so that if you want to make a purchase, it'll go right on to your statement. So we'll make it very easy for you to be able to thank one another and those that are in the community. And so as we do every year for Retirement Community, we have themes. And so um, on the screen, we'll see, I have some images of famous individuals on the screen for Monday will be Hat Day. And um, we have our infamous folks that are up there showing off that you can wear your favorite apparel on your head uh, so that it, don't worry about messing up your hair. It's Hat Day, it's very special. And then Tuesday, we're really excited to have Wild Wild West Day. And so get the spurs out, get your hat out, um, leave the horses in the stall, however, but it's Wild Wild West Day. And we're very excited to bring back the bake sale. That has been extremely popular. And that is a little fundraiser that people donate to. And it's another um, area where the resources from that go to the Employee Emergency Fund and so we're excited for the bake sale. We'll have that in this space as well on Tuesday morning until all the goodies are sold. And then Wednesday is sports day. And we're pretty excited that uh, you can wear your favorite swag on sports day. I think that uh, we have somebody modeling that as it's a Mariner player that we brought in for um, our modeling on sports day for Wednesday. And so um, it doesn't have to be a local team. If you want to be a, go ahead and be a trader like Jeff and have a Denver Bronco jersey with Russell Wilson on it. We still love Jeff, but that's okay. And then Thursday, um, bring out the sunglasses and the tropical stuff. And uh, it's our tropical day on Thursday. That'll be a day also for staff only. We'll be providing them a lunch. And so that'll be set up down just for an FYI for you down in the fire, uh, Parkview Lounge. We'll be setting up lunch that we do every year, a grab and go for the staff. So we're coordinating those details as well. We'll wrap up the week on Friday with our Horizon House theme day where um, we have our new logo and colors that you can wear, colors of the logo and show off your Horizon House theme day on Friday to wrap up the week. Um, we aren't able to do the talent show this year. Uh, we were gonna have me doing some tap dancing, but um, I'm tap dancing around that because I can't dance, but uh, we'll be wrapping up the week on Friday and distributing the Bright Spot cards to our staff on that day. So more information will absolutely come on this. We just wanted to give you a heads up. Start looking forward and planning out your little outfits that you'll be wearing on all of those theme days. And so next we're gonna bring up Jeff to talk about dining services that we always love to hear about from his team. Jeff. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, and I'm really hoping my Russell Wilson jersey comes in before uh, that date. So supposed to come in early May. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So, uh, but yeah, just a couple quick updates from food services here. Uh, like I always want to start off. We just uh, celebrated Easter. We had a really nice event that day. Uh, see how the pictures coming up. Yep, there we go. Beautiful. Uh, we served about 205 residents and guests and family that day. Uh, it was a fabulous event. Uh, you can see the table decor that Oliver set up was amazing. Uh, I don't think the picture's there, but his display out front was 
you know, always top notch, like it always is. It's just amazing. I love coming in after he's put up his display to see what he's come up with this time, you know. Uh, so amazing. The staff had a great time. I felt the whole service went very smooth and everybody really, really enjoyed themselves. The food was fantastic. So uh, really nice. And uh, piggybacking on that, here we go. Mother's Day is right around the corner. So uh, we already have reservations open up for that. So come see me or Barry at the front desk, shoot us an email, leave us a voicemail. We'll uh, get back in contact with you and we'll get you set up for a reservation. There's plenty of openings. Um, we just started that yesterday. Um, also next week, Cinco de Mayo is coming up. So when the menu packet comes out, you'll see a, a few special items on that day to celebrate Cinco de Mayo. Uh, then the other thing I just wanted to touch on is a, a little change we're making in terms of the bistro specials at dinner time. Um, you know, you know, we're a little bit short staffed and we have a few more people out of the kitchen right now. And we felt that it was just going to be a better decision to sell the bistro special off the buffet line rather than having the kitchen staff, you know, struggling to get it in a bunch of boxes right before we start dinner and then overwhelming the bistro and everything like that. So we feel like the food will be fresher and hotter coming off the line. Um, you'll be able to get it the whole time between five and seven. You won't have to worry about getting there at five and it's already gone from the bistro and that sort of thing. Uh, we've been doing it actually all week this way, and we feel like it's been been pretty well. It's kind of a little soft opening on that. So um, that's kind of where we're at with that. Staffing-wise, still looking for that. I do actually have two servers in the mix getting hired. We're waiting for background checks and drug tests and that sort of thing. So we're getting a little bit of improvement on that. Fingers crossed. We uh, hopefully get a couple cooks, and then we'll be a lot closer to where we need to be. So... Um, that's what I got. And uh, next up, we've got Valerie uh, with some introductions. Thank you very much. Oh, good morning. It's so great to see smiling faces. It's my pleasure again to introduce some of our newest residents, uh, Lee and Frank Van Dusen. Lee was born in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and has lived in a variety of places, including Paris. She earned her BA from Hollins University and MAA at American University. She's the founder of the textiles company that produces fabrics that are non-toxic, ethical, and sustainable. We thought for the uh, conservation committee, we should include that. Her interests include cooking, traveling, and reading. Frank was born in Philadelphia. He earned his BA from Princeton and graduated law school from the University of Puget Sound. He's a retired lawyer and interested in hiking and cross country skiing. Welcome Lee and Frank. And Barry Eben. Barry was born in Los Angeles. He earned his BA from USC and has a PhD in clinical psychology from Purdue University. He worked as a psychotherapist and is a former crisis hotline supervisor and university counseling center director. Barry is interested in the arts, road tripping, poker, and watching sports. Barry follows in the footsteps of his mom, Sylvia, who lived at Horizon House and is most looking forward to making rich connections with his new neighbors at Horizon House. Welcome to Horizon House, Barry. And next up, staff with Byron. Sorry. Thank you, Valerie. Um, so we have had a great um, six weeks uh, in the last six weeks of hiring, um, and we've got some new staff introductions. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm losing my voice as well. I've been talking a lot. Uh, lots of meetings. Uh, so we've had some great uh, hiring in the last uh, six weeks um, and uh, on the HR team and uh, throughout the community. Uh, and so I'd like to introduce uh, a few of them. Unfortunately, they can't be here today because um, of our setting. But um, we have uh, Javon uh, Gartrell Hall. Uh, she is joining the HR team uh, as our recruiter. Uh, so we have an in-house full-time 40 hours focused on recruiting, uh, which is fantastic. So we're hoping uh, that effort gets us uh, much better positioned uh, with our staffing. Uh, and then we also have Kenneth Woods, who joined us as an environmental services tech. Um, so welcome, Javon and uh, Kenneth. 
And then uh, on our food services team, we have uh, Sharice uh, Bancano, uh, who joined us as a diet aide, and also Kashari Hayes, who joined us as a diet aide as well. Uh, we also, uh, in food services, had uh, Joseph Ingham uh, join us. Uh, so we've had some really great uh, new hires uh, joining us on the food services team, and hopefully we've got a few more, Jeff. Um, and then we also had Adina Kiffin uh, join us as an elder care assistant um, on our AL team. And last but not least, um, another addition to our HR team, uh, Sierra Morgan uh, joined us as a HR manager. Um, I've previously worked with her at uh, past companies and have a relationship uh, built with her and uh, she's a strong addition to our HR team. Uh, and then we also have Patrick Nance who joined us as our project coordinator uh, for our uh, renovations team. Uh, so we've got uh, uh, about eight people who joined us uh, and we've got a lot more in the pipeline. Um, I know I've heard a lot of feedback uh, from uh, residents uh, regarding our staffing situation. Um, and we've got a lot of efforts and a lot of uh, initiatives working toward getting staffed uh, to support all of our, our programs. All right, thank you. Thank you, Byron. Great, great new team members to HR. It's been a real delight to meet them all. On that note, in terms of recruitment, I just want to share that Brittany Hallett, our Director of Assisted Living, has done a fantastic job of establishing a partnership with Seattle Central Community College right nearby up on Broadway. And we now have a partnership for nursing and elder care assistant students to be here as a training site. We've got two groups of students who have been upstairs this week. And we are hoping that that will help to bridge some pipeline for us. And there was a question mark from Brittany and some of our team. Gosh, do we bring the students when we're in the middle of an outbreak? And I said, absolutely. What better time to train these students than to know how to protect themselves and work within the realities of healthcare these days. So it's a delight to have students back with us and it is a good partnership. So thank you, Byron, for all the work you and your team are doing to bring us the staff we desperately need. Thank you. A couple of other announcements before the slide announcements. Uh, Neil McReynolds uh, put in front of me just uh, a little bit ago, and I'm sure this will be announced in the alert and HH Connect, but apparently on May 19th, we're a little ways out, but May 19th at 7.30 p.m., uh, the mayor of Seattle will be here to speak. This is going to be a joint Zoom presentation to residents of Horizon House, as well as residents with Mirabella and Skyline. So stay tuned for the mayor of Seattle to be speaking to all of you. I will be very curious to see what he may have to say. And if there's a Q&A portion, drill him about safety and security in Seattle. We're concerned about that. All of us are, especially going nearby through Freeway Park. So I'm hoping he'll have more to share about the city plans to address that. The other news I want to share that's been more recent development is I've been announcing in the past that Amy Nguyen, a tiny, tiny little former clinic manager, was going to be returning from an extended maternity leave. She has been out and away since early December. So it's been a while since we've seen Amy. Amy had shared with me last year uh, before she learned her joyous news of being pregnant with her third baby that she was really starting to feel a hunger to learn more about the side of operations. And so Amy let me know uh, shortly a while ago that she has given her resignation. Oh, I'm so disappointed, but I'm excited for her because she has a wonderful opportunity to go into an administrator training program. And she's already been accepted to be a future administrator at a small adult family home and assisted living community much closer to her home. So it's a great growth opportunity for her. She uh, asked if she can continue contacting all of us to be mentors. And I said, absolutely. We always want to be neighbors and help colleagues. We're all in this together. It is a tough job, especially these days with the constant regulatory changes, staffing changes, 
guidance changes. And so it's a great opportunity for her. And she is up to the task and ready for this grow. So I'll be working to resort through some of the functions I've been doing while Amy's been out and figuring out what makes the most sense. In the meantime, please do continue letting me know or Erica Campbell if you are going to be away from Horizon House for planned surgery or out of the hospital, let Erica or me know because we do continue following up with hospitals and skilled nursing facilities for any of you who are off site receiving care so that we can be prepared for discharge planning and what those plans may be for your return back to Horizon House. We want to be a resource and a support to ensure you have what you may need as you return back to Horizon House. For some final wrap up, uh, we are going to be doing today is the final day along with tomorrow morning to turn in any of your expired or unused medications. We've got several boxes ready to go. Tomorrow is a drug take back day. Unfortunately, the large container that we ordered has been on back order for the supply disruption situation. So because that has not yet arrived and been installed, Erica has graciously opened up her office. She will be accepting any of your unused expired medications today between 1 and 4 p.m. And she will be available again tomorrow from 11 a.m. to noon. And feel free to block off, uh, black out your name, any identifier information on your prescription bottles. Uh, feel free to bring them on down to Erica on B1, just before the gym space. We've got, I've boxed up four boxes of medications. So this is a good opportunity to clear them out. And when we get the new container, which hopefully will be soon, it's going to be a fairly large, probably close to the podium height. At this point in time, it will be secured and secured to the wall. So none of you can run off with medications or vendors or staff. At this point in time, if the wall infrastructure supports it, we're looking to install the container on the way into the pool room nearest Erica's office, right next to a couple of storage rooms. If that place doesn't work from a wall perspective, the second backup plan will be on the other uh, pool entrance wall across from the Sona machine as you go up the ramp and exit into the central tower. So we'll put out communication when that container has arrived and been installed so that you can securely deposit in there at any time of your choosing expired medications. And last but not least, there are some small resident group sessions that are going to be coming up uh, beginning next week. Tuesday, May 3rd, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And again on Wednesday, May 4th and 9th at 9 a.m. and 10.30. They are going to be a hybrid, uh, being offered hybrid in person and via Zoom, limited capacity as always. And RSVPs are required, so you may certainly stop by, email, or call Beth Reese, Executive Assistant, to get your name on the list. And I'm not quite sure if I'm on the docket. Am I on the docket for those this time around, Beth? I am. So I'll see some of you again. It rotates who accompanies Mike based on the topic. So when Mike is back in the office on Monday, we'll see what the press and topics are and be available to you for questions, just conversation. I really encourage those of you to, who are interested to come. I learn a lot from those of you who have input, insights to share, and it's just a great conversation to hear from one another. So please do come and from Bright Spots, we recently had staff treat trolley. Again, I think you've been hearing loud and clear through the media just as we give a lot of focus to residents and welcoming residents, it is imperative more than ever that we do that same rollout and good care of our staff for employee retention. We've always done that, and it's even more important to continue remaining focused. So we do find opportunities through an employee recognition team, which is comprised of staff from across the organization to honor staff do some little treats every now and then. And this was a recent staff treat trolley where fruit was handed out. In the past, there were some gardening seeds handed out. So just trying to surprise and delight, do some different things. And we will be joining back together again on Friday, May 27th for our next fireside chat. I anticipate it will probably be a similar setup as we're experiencing right now. And we are hoping for next month to have an opportunity 
to be able to flow in questions for those of you viewing the chat from the comforts of your apartment. We're not set up with this new system for this month, but we hope to iron out any kinks or glitches. So for those of you watching from afar, who shall they direct any input to that we can consider for enhancements? Would that be to you, Risa? Yes, if you have any comments or feedback, even if it's to say sound was great, picture was great, or this didn't work so well, let Risa know so that we can continue fine tuning. Are there any questions from the in-person audience since we can take questions from you, Anne-Marie? Yeah, I wonder uh, the, about the big shredding machines or the containers for the shredding machines, when they're coming and where they will be. So the question is, what will be the timing for the big shredding machines that typically come on site during tax season? And I don't have an answer, but Risa is nodding and Risa has an answer. Risa, why don't you come on up to the front so the audience from home can see you? The little person's up here. Good morning, everybody. So the shredding bins will arrive Monday. Uh, they will be placed throughout the building. So the North Tower, Central Tower, Mail Room, and in the West Wing, they will be here for a month. So please get all those old taxes and all the stuff that is secure that you want to get to be, be, be rid of. So they will be here for a month. Uh, if you need assistance getting stuff in the box, see me and I will help you with that. Thank you. Great, thank you, Risa. Any other questions? Anne Marie again. Those listening devices that are going to assisted living, will they be able to hear uh, books on tape? Hmm, that's a great question. Looks like Carol, I don't know the answer, but I think Carol does. The question is with the GEM grant that was awarded for the music and memory equipment, can residents uh, listen to audio books as well? It's my understanding, this is not an expert answer, that the music and memory program is limited to music because as I have heard, music with people uh, who are tr troubled in the mind or have dementia can be a great influence. And so they have favorite playback music. And if the person, him or herself, isn't able to uh, design their own playback list, family members are involved. So family members are part of the ripple of current of folks. But I, to my knowledge, there's no books as of now. Does that help? Good question. Thanks, Anne-Marie. Any other final questions? All right, we are ending for a change actually before 11 o'clock. So thank you all for coming. Thank you for those of you watching from your comforts of your apartment. Have a great rest of the day and weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.